In this video, I'm going to program a part from start to finish. I'm going to put the part and the drawing on the screen here. We've got 10 bubbles to inspect. There's a couple features on this part that are not dimensioned, so we're not going to inspect them. I'm going to use the CAD model, and then I'm going to do a manual alignment and run the program on the machine right here. Oh, well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my features, I'm going to uh, do my alignment, uh, get my clearance planes, run a manual alignment, and then go in, grab all the features I need, and then go in and get my characteristics. After that, I'll go in and optimize. I'll make sure I got the right number of points, scanning paths are good, then a little bit of double checking and making sure nothing's gonna crash. So let's hop in here. The first thing we wanna do is open up our CAD model. So I'm gonna go to CAD, CAD file, load. It's gonna default to ASIS. So I wanna hit this drop down, change it to step. And here's the file I want. We can see that it's a step. I'm gonna open it up. Now the origin, the coordinate system is gonna come from the CAD model. So if it came from SolidWorks or Creo, it's gonna remember that origin and it'll bring it right in. Hopefully that's the same as the origin on the drawing. It, it really should be, doesn't have to be, but it, it should be with you know, most designs. So I'm gonna hit this uh, grayed out box, show the CAD model with surfaces. It imported the colors from the CAD model, which is convenient and kind of looks nice. The next thing I'm gonna do is go to Planner, Measurement Plan Simulation, and I wanna click on Show CMM, zoom out, all right, I just want to make sure here that my part is in the correct orientation, okay? So the X and the Y and the Z are where I think it is as I'm looking at the part on the table in front of me. I'm not going to do anything else here for now. I'm going to close out of that. I'm going to zoom in on my model. I want to come down here to this uh, drop down in the lower left, and I want to define and select geometry. Now I'm going to go through and one, two, three, select my three planes. Now I've got to go in to my strategy. I have a default setting where it doesn't load up a strategy. Uh, your settings might be different, but in any case, you want to check your strategy here. So what I'm going to do is multiple polylines, which is this one right here. I'm going to set an edge distance. I'll do 30 thousandths, hit OK, and it's going to guess some nice polylines for me right here. Now this is a 3D printed part, so I don't have uh, countersinks on the holes. If it's a metal part, you're probably gonna have a little bit of countersink right there, so you wouldn't wanna be so close to the edge of the hole. Uh, even if it's not shown in the CAD model, normally that'll be kind of a, a edge dressing on a, on a normal part. All right, I'm gonna hit okay there. I'm good with this, I'm gonna hit okay. I'm gonna go plane two, now, this is where it's nice to program the CAD model while you've already got your fixturing set up. So I can see where my fixtures are. I got the little bullets right here and a clamp. So what I can do here, go to strategy. I can select points that I know are gonna, you know, avoid my clamps. I'm gonna select all those uh, probing points with shift and hit this uh, key to convert selected features to a poly line. That's gonna go around my clamps. Now you can make an argument, maybe I need more uh, surface area than this, but this should be good for now. I'm gonna hit okay there. So we're happy with that, hit okay. I'm gonna do the same thing on plane three. I'm gonna have one clamp in the way, so I'm just gonna go in and do my strategy like so. I want it to go down here, and then I'll have it come back to the center, right? And convert that to a polyline. Doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to scan most of the surface. So now I've got three planes. This is all I need for an alignment. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go to my measurement tab, base start alignment, hit okay. Rotation in space is gonna be the top plane. Planar rotation will be the second largest plane. Um, that's generally the way you'd want to do it. Hit OK. 
x origin is whatever stops motion left to right in this case because we want our x left to right. So it would be this plane on the part. That's going to be plane three. Y origin is the opposite. Hit OK. Z origin is going to be plane one. Now I'm going to check manual alignment. I'm going to execute a run uh, right now to tell the machine exactly where the part is. So here I'm going to go in and take some points. I only need three points for a plane. You can go in and take four usually. It doesn't really matter for your alignment. I'm going to hit return on the keypad. I'm going to come in, take a couple points for this plane. Now remember this is a plane, not a 2D line. So those three points shouldn't be in a line. Now Calypso could probably figure it out for you, but just, you know, geometry wise, it's, you, you want them to be not in the same line. So now we're going to go to plane three and get at least three points over here. Whenever you're taking points with the CMM, you always want to be perpendicular to the surface. So if I'm taking a point over here on my controls, I want to be going all the way, let me get it out of the way, this way, right? I don't want to be diagonal with it at all. That can uh, kind of mess up the, the data it's gathering. All right, so I got two. I need one more point. And I'll take four. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to hit OK here. And now we see it moves the gnomon. I want to do my clearance planes. I'm just going to pull them from the CAD model, which is this top button right here. Hit OK. And then hit OK there. I don't want to update my uh, clearance planes. They're all uh, clearance plane plus Z, which is what I want for this part. Now, I want to go in and execute a feature to make sure the machine knows where the part is. Just kind of a double check. All right, so it's going to go in and gather that data. If the machine goes off into the middle of nowhere, it means there's something wrong with that alignment. Uh, it's very important to do this as soon as possible in your program. Tell the machine where the part is so that as you continue programming, you're not going to run into issues. So it gathered that whole plane without crashing. Now we're good to program the rest of the part. So let's go get some more features. In order to do the uh, caliper distance here, we'll need this plane. There's a profile on this surface, so we need this plane. We'll need these two cylinders. And that should wrap up the features we need. And then we'll go through and do the characteristics. So I'll go ahead and do that. I could click on the screen or I could just come in and take a couple of points here, right? It'll figure it out on the CAD model. And we gotta take five points on this surface, I'm going to do clearance plane plus Z because we don't really have anything to avoid here. I'm going to hit OK. So that's plane four. I can do points here because we're just using a cow per distance. There's no form or orientation or profile on that side of the part. So just a couple points is going to be fine. Now we're going to do the other side of the part. I can't see this side as good. I have the same view as the, the camera does in this angle. But what I'm going to do here since there's no clamps in the way, I will choose this from the CAD view. I'm going to click on plane five, strategy. And I'm going to do multiple polyline. It's just going to give me one. And I actually don't like that edge distance. So I'm going to try it again and make it 80 thousandths. So it'll do a nice polyline going right through the middle of the part. I'm going to hit OK. And then that is done. I'll double click it again, make sure we have the right clearance plane, which we'll check all those at the same time uh, in just a minute. So we're good there. We got all the planes we need going around the part. Now I'm going to do my cylinders. One, two. The cylinders are pretty good with the strategy. They should guess. We got three circle paths. There's going to be nothing in the way. We need at least two circle paths for a position because we want to locate the axis of that feature. I'm all good with that. All right, so these are all the features we're going to need to complete this assignment. Now we got to start doing characteristics. 
So let me just do them in order. We've got a flatness for the top plane. That's going to be number one. Here we go, form and location, flatness. I'm going to label it per the drawing. One flatness, double click. The feature is plane one, right? And then the tolerance is going to be four thousandths. I'm going to hit OK. The next feature is going to be a perpendicularity to A and B. A form and location, perpendicularity, double click. What we're controlling is the origin for uh, X measurements. So that's going to be plane three. The primary datum is plane one, datum A, and the secondary datum is plane two, our origin for our Y measurements. We hit OK, and I gotta go ahead and add the tolerance, which is, again, four thousandths. <coughs> I'm gonna rename to perpendicularity to match the drawing, hit OK. Now I'm just going to copy and paste. Right. So I'm going to call this three perpendicularity, same tolerance. This time we're going to be controlling plane two, and we're not going to be controlling it to the secondary datum per the drawing. So I'm going to delete this and hit this green check, and that's going to clear the secondary datum. Okay. So it's kind of backwards from how you'd make the drawing. Normally you do perpendicularity to datum A is your secondary datum, and then your tertiary datum is perpendicularity to A, or your primary and secondary datums. So in any case, it doesn't matter what we order we do it with Calypso, you can mix and match. I'm just doing them in the order of the bubbles. So number four is gonna be the caliper distance. So we're gonna to go to size, distance, caliper, double click, so we're going between plane four and plane three, right? And we want the X measurement. The tolerance on that is plus or minus 20 thousandths. So I can enter it in here and we're gonna hit okay. I'm gonna rename this as number four. Next up on our drawing, it's the caliper distance to the table. And I guess I lied, there is one more feature we need to get, it's the actual table. So I'm gonna come back in here and just take points on our table. So I'm gonna do four points, kind of widely spaced. I'm gonna do clearance group, group, Clearance group plus Z, hit OK. And we're gonna change the retract distance for that in a little bit. So now we can do the distance between plane one and plane six size. Actually, here are characteristics. I'm just gonna copy this uh, caliper distance, rename it, number five, delete that one, hit OK. Now we're just going to be controlling the distance between plane six and plane one. And we can use that, uh, the table plane six to move our alignment to match the drawing as well. So the tolerance is going to remember it from the previous one. It's plus or minus uh, 20. Oh, sorry. We've got to do the Z tolerance and it will not remember it from the previous one. All right, and our nominal, since I measured the table, it's not gonna know what it's supposed to be because the table isn't in the CAD model, but I'm just gonna punch in 0.75 as it's stated on the drawing. I hit okay there. Next up, number six is the profile of this back surface that we can't see from this angle, but it's just a flat surface. We have a form and location. Profile, double click. The feature is plane five. Now, what I'm gonna do here is create our uh, datum reference frame. What we wanna do here is choose our datums. And this is gonna be true of any kind of location tolerance, whether it's profile or position. 
you don't want to use the base alignment. So we're gonna do planes one, two, and three. Now we're gonna save this datum reference frame as datum reference frame one, hit okay. That way we'll be able to reuse it. Now the profile is 10 thousandths. It's gonna be bilateral, equal. We're gonna hit okay. Now the reason it's gray and it didn't give us an actual is that it hasn't scanned that surface yet. It just has whatever, the four or five points I took. So it needs more data. I'm gonna rename this six dash profile. Now we're gonna get into uh, some diameters. So bubble seven and nine, I'm gonna do basically at the same time. So we're gonna go to features, cylinder one, report that diameter. The half inch has a tolerance of one thousandths. And then cylinder two, we're gonna report that diameter the three eighths has a diameter of 10 thousandths. Has a tolerance of 10 thousandths. If you notice, you have to make sure you keep the minus sign in the lower tolerance or it'll screw it up basically and hit okay. Now these are gonna show up in my characteristics. I'm gonna rename these. Cylinder one is gonna be the half inch. So this is actually number nine. Rename the next one. The three quarter is gonna be number seven. Hit okay. All right, and I can reorder these as needed. Now, uh, number eight is gonna be a position and number 10 is gonna be a position. So, form and location position, double click. Let's do cylinder one first. That's gonna be our half inch, hit okay. Now this is where it's cool. We can go to this drop down, load datum reference frame, and this is gonna be the one I saved just a minute ago. And hit okay. And it's gonna load up those three planes. I wanna be sure to punch in the correct tolerance. It's gonna be seven thousandths for the half inch hole. And then we're at RFS, so we don't have to change that. I'm gonna hit okay. Now, I'm gonna copy that position. Let me rename this one first. The position for the half inch hole is number 10. And then let me go ahead and rename this. The position for the three quarter inch hole is eight. And I know it got a little scrambled there, uh, but Going off the drawing, it's easier to do the two diameters than the two positions. All right. So the position for the half inch hole is good. For this one that we copied and pasted, now we just have to change the feature to cylinder two, and then the tolerance to whatever's in the feature control frame. In this case, it's 30 thousandths. The nominal position comes from the CAD model, shouldn't have to change that unless you go in and probe that feature instead of clicking on it on the CAD model. I'm gonna hit okay. I'm gonna go ahead and check that. Plane four, I went in and probed. So I actually do have to make an adjustment with that. If you notice our nominal is uh, three point and five thousandths, I need to change that to three, uh, three inches total because it didn't come from the CAD model. So something to watch out for. I'm gonna hit okay. Now, before I run the program, I'm going to reorganize these so they're in the right order. And I wanna go ahead, on the drawing it says need a minimum of 200 points for anything with form, orientation, or profile. I'm gonna change all of those at the same time. So I'm gonna to go to uh, the measurement tab, measurement plan editor features. So I'm gonna to go to strategy and then number of points. This is gonna show us the number of points for each of these. The circle paths uh, look pretty good, but we wanna change some of these to have more points. So I'm just gonna click here, and I just pulled a number out of a hat, but this is how you go in and you can change all of them at the same time. And then I can select several, right? Now we're getting 200 points on each of those polylines. That'll be plenty of data for what we need. Now, 
if you're running this for real, you should check the cookbook for your filters and outliers, but this is more just how to structure and how to write the program. That's just optimization stuff you can add on after you have the meat of the program proved out and it runs correctly. All right, so I'm gonna hit okay. Now we're all set. I'm gonna go, oops, say we're all set. Now I'm gonna go to the measurement tab, measurement plan editor features, travel, clearance group, and just make sure all of these are clearance plane plus Z before I run the program. Again, they're not using the star probe. Uh, there's no real obstacles. I've already accounted for all the clamps. This is gonna work just fine. So characteristics, run. I already did a manual alignment. I'm gonna hit clear existing results, and I'm gonna run the alignment for this program, which is measurement plan 28. Hit start and then hope for the best. So let's just go ahead and watch this run. I'll fast forward through it unless we crash, in uh, which case I'll put it in slow motion. So I did make two mistakes here. I wanna go ahead and show you why, what happened. So the first, I've got a little error here that says, uh, so the sensor did not carry out the measurement, the expected, whatever. That's because I put the lines too close to the holes on this part. I just gotta space that out a little bit more in the multiple poly line. The second thing, I forgot to change the retract distance. So what's gonna happen here when we're checking this plane, as it goes from these points over here to the other side, it's gonna go uh, 0.2 inches up, which is the retract distance, and it's gonna smash into the part like so. so Let's, uh, since the program's dead anyway, I'm gonna hit green, measurement plan editor features. I'm gonna go to retract distance, and for plane six, the, the table, I'm gonna go ahead and make this one and a half inch retract distance. So let me drive the part off of here. Let's go ahead and execute that feature. Execute. So it's gonna take this first point, second point. Now it jumps way up in the air, right? So it'll clear the part. This isn't the most efficient way to write programs, but just taking a couple points, it will work and it will clear obstacles. All right. So for the first problem we had in the program, let's go to plane one strategy. It's just a little too close to something. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete these polylines. I'm gonna try again. So let's use the uh, 50 thousandths. That looks a little bit better. Uh, let's hit OK there. And actually, I want to go into the poly lines and make sure they take more points. So we'll do 100 points a piece. So like I said, there's more than one place to change the strategy. Since I'm only changing one thing, this is fine. Otherwise, it's easier to go in measurement plan editor features. All right, so a good few points. Hit OK there. Now, let's run the program for real. And see if we get that same error. All right, so the program ran successfully. I guess that there's just two issues, the one with the multiple polylines being too close to the edge, easy fix. The other with the retract distance, again, easy fix. Uh, I like measurement plan editor features for changing a lot of things at once. It also gives you a good view of what every feature has going on. Uh, this is a simple program, 10 steps, uh, you know, just some practice on how to, you know, uh, write a program from a CAD model. This could have just as easily be done with the walk up and measure method, but the CAD model does give you some additional capabilities as far as just seeing what's going on on the screen. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below.